All right, welcome everybody to the International Speaker Network call for March 3rd. Uh, it's the, yeah, March 3rd, 2020. And I am Katrina Sawa, the Jumpstart Your Biz Coach, speaker and author uh, with jumpstartyourmarketing.com. I'm also the organizer of this group. And we meet on a monthly basis on a webinar like this, where you can network mastermind and we have a short speaker as well uh, and a topic of discussion. We have open Q&A. Uh, so uh, this is a great resource for you. It's absolutely free. Make sure you are at least even if you're, if you're not on my email list with the speaker network uh, list, then make sure you're in the meetup page, please, so you can get regular emails from the group. Um, being on Facebook, sometimes we're out of sight, out of mind, so you can be in the Facebook group as well, but make sure that's not your only me means of being in the group, uh, otherwise you might miss out on some things. So a uh, couple announcements really quick while we're getting people uh, into the group is, um, there is going to be an international speaker network conference this year it's going to be in august in sacramento the dates are tentatively august 21 22 with an optional day on that sunday perhaps uh the 23rd i don't know yet so i would block out the 21st 22nd and 23rd so you can fly it'll be worth flying in for we're gonna have um, Chuck's arranged to have somebody come from the, um, if not him himself, but maybe other people from the National Speakers Association. I've got friends coming from the Women's Speakers Association and the Public Speakers Association, as well as some other services and speaker related uh, businesses like Speakertunity and a few others. So it's going to be a great mecca for speakers in all arenas uh paid and free and the reason i wanted to bring all those other associations in is because i think you need to be a part of a lot of them in order to really grow your speaking business so uh mark your calendar now i'm working on the dates i was sick for like 10 days so uh what didn't get delegated didn't get done and uh so then i'm picking up the slack um probably this weekend the next week because i'm still ah, scratchy throat and and I need to rest. And so whatever time I'm not working, I need to rest. So I'm not gonna do a lot of extra stuff. Um, so I have that, it's gonna be super fun. And um, and then just so you guys know, the uh, I'm doing another compilation book for Jumpstart Your Blank book. So if you know any authors or people that wanna write a chapter in a compilation book, uh, it looks like this. And uh, oh, there goes that book. This was, Chuck was in this one, Barb was in this one, uh, and then I did one, that was 2018, I did one in 2019, the blue one back there, and this one's going to be orange, I think, is the next color, and then green, I just want to have a series of them, uh, and uh, looking for about 15 authors, give or take, to want to write a chapter, so it's thirteen to $1,500, depending on when you get in. And uh, we do a lot of the marketing and all that good fun stuff. So, so there's that. And um, the last announcement I will make is that um, I do have a live event um, in April. If anybody is interested, you can come. Um, I'll give you guys $100 off the ticket price, which is right now $297. And so you can come for a couple hundred bucks. If you have to fly in, you just pay for hotel uh and your flight and it's three days of really working on your business stuff so it's business mindset um, marketing systems website a whole bunch of different things the things that make you a smooth running money making business machine is what we cover in the event <clears throat> this event is called love and money live so it's at loveandmoneylive.com and I'll put the coupon code in the chat room while we're talking and all that good stuff. Uh, and so today we have uh, speaker Angela Hall, who's probably putting her, she doesn't wear a lot of makeup, so I doubt if she's doing her makeup, but <laughs> um, she's gonna talk to us today all about uh, making your speaker uh, or what your website speaker worthy. There was 27 people signed up for this, so I'm hoping people will show up here. Um, but what I like to say is that if you show up on time, you get an introduction. So 
Um, and the people that don't show up on time, they're not going to get it. So uh, I'm going to go around the room and give you guys an opportunity to introduce yourself for a minute or so or less, a uh, minute or less, please. And then um, we'll move into Angela's uh, presentation and then we'll have some Q&A uh, and discussion on that topic as well. We can, I was even going to, Mila, I think you're just uh, making noise because you're on. Sorry. It's okay. Just, I, 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 I could never get my Zoom on my computer on and I finally did it and I just turned off my phone. Oh, perfect. Okay. Oh, now I'm off. Wait a minute. Yeah. Now I'm gone. Sound. Uh, no. We see, we see you on video, video and we have Okay, I think I got it. Do you hear me? We do. Okay, Doc. When you're on both, you make an echo. Just like, off. So we might want to hang up the phone. I did. Looks nope, it's still on. It's on? Yeah. No, it's it's gone now. Okay, wait, let me just turn off the phone and I will solve that. Anyways. Okay. Um, Phone's off. Are we okay or is it my computer messing up? Well, the it says, see, where if you look at the video screen, and so one thing, if you're not used to doing Zoom, if you're not seeing us like the Brady Bunch, where we're all a bunch of squares, if you are, that's where you want to be probably. Um, if you're not, and you're seeing one big picture of me and a whole bunch of little people up on top, then you want to go up to the top uh, right-hand corner of your screen in the black, and it'll say uh, it'll say gallery view, and you want to click that so you have a gallery view. Okay. So, and yeah, I was just telling everybody. So, okay. Um, so Chuck's in a noisy place, and it's getting worse. He said. So Chuck, you can put your comments of what you do in the uh, chat room and uh, send it to everyone of what you do. He has a website called speakerpresenter.com and he's a speaker trainer and he also is the trainer um, of the National Speakers Association NorCal uh, Speakers Academy. So he, he runs that group. So if you're interested in NSA, the National Speakers Association, you wanna reach out to Chuck. So there's your commercial check. <laughs> and uh, so let's see. So um, Mila, since we have you unmuted and everything is good, why don't you go next and then we'll go to Barb, Michelle, and Russ. Okay, I hear the sound coming in. Hi, I'm Mila Johansson and I am so happy to be part of this group. And um, I think you've heard me say before, I have my, my book coming out about my famous suffragette grandmother from cowgirl to Congress. And it's um, going to probably be ready by Mar uh, April 1st. I have a professional putting it together right now. And I'm already starting to do my speaking engagements. I did my first podcast of my life this morning with a woman from a museum in Philadelphia. And I'm looking for more associations to go and, and speak at. I've got like four, four booked, but I, I'm looking to really go out and, and get people to know about this book so they can read it for the 100th anniversary coming up on August 18th. It's exciting. And I love my grandmother. I was raised by her and, and I got to go with her when she spoke with Gloria Stein and Marla Thomas and Jane Fonda several times in Hollywood. And we get that she was in her early 90s then. She was the first woman lobbyist at the Capitol. Very cool. Well, thank you very much for that. Awesome. And then I said, what, Barb, you're next. Hi, I'm Barb Ingracia of Manage Copyright, you know, C in a circle. Um, I uh, am a copyright law educator. And as speakers, we need to know about copyright law for what we present, especially if we're doing PowerPoint kinds of things. We need to know about images. And then we also need to know how to protect what we create. Um, uh, Reverend Martin Luther King's famous I Dream a, uh, I Have a Dream speech is a famous copyright uh, uh, case. So speakers and copyright go together. Barb and Gracia, managecopyright.com. Awesome. And you have a free report there too. I know that, that they will want to get. Awesome. And I think it's said Michelle and then Russ. Hi guys, my name is Michelle Altizer and myself and my husband, we coach couples on doing the counterintuitive thing to spice up their marriage of uh, introducing hot wifing to those who want to learn more about it. 
just as a curiosity or who want to implement it, we actually have a step-by-step -step plan. And we actually finished our brand finally, Katrina, so I want to show you later. If oh, I get fun. You'll have to send me the link. Very cool. I want to see it. <laughs> All right, Russ, take the way. All right. I'm not sure I'm in a noisy place, so hopefully you can see this, but I'm Russ Matthews. I'm an author and a podcaster. My new book came out about five months ago, Stock and Options Trading for Life. My new podcast has 17 episodes out there, The Modern Stock and Options Trading Show. And I'm speaking. I'm starting to speak. Uh, my first one is in March 22nd in Rancho Cordova to about 300 uh, stock and options traders. So I'm looking forward to that. But uh, I'm not an experienced speaker. So I'm an experienced uh, stock and options coach and, and registered investment advisor. So I look forward to uh, tips and tricks from uh, from the group. Thanks so much. Awesome. Love that. Congrats on all that. Okay, then we'll go to how about Whitney and then Steve Zapato. Just unmute yourself, Whitney. Can you speak? Oh, not in a place where you can speak. Okay, well, type your stuff into the chat room. Steve, are you able to speak? I muted you so you can unmute. Or I'll unmute you. Here you go. Go ahead, Steve. No, I'm not able to. Are you not able to speak? Steve, are you able to speak? Okay. Well, maybe not. I'm going to mute you again if you can come back on. Hey, Barbara. So Barbara Ellison Hi. came in just in time to do an introduction. Uh, go ahead and give it to us. Oh, right now? Oh, yep. Hi. You're the okay. last one. Uh, hey, um, oh, wow. Okay. Well, my name is Barbara Ellison. I'm known as the Herald of Happiness and has a woman who has been um, wed divorced and widowed and bankrupted and a PTSD survivor. I have regained my happiness and I teach other people how to do the same thing to get their happy back. I so love it's a blessing. Awesome. And don't forget to put your stuff in the chat room, you guys. Uh, Heather, yes. you came in time too. So Heather, if you wanna unmute and give your uh, one minute introduction. Are you able to speak? You're in here twice. Heather, you're muted in both places. There, you're unmuted. Hi, this is Heather. Yeah. Hey, here. Katrina. Hi. Hi, everybody. Are we doing introductions now? We are, and it's your turn, sweetie. Oh. Okay, perfect, thanks. Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Heather Tucker. I am the CEO and co-founder of Another Level Living Incorporated, which is a professional training and coaching company. And I'm also part of uh, Katrina's amazing uh, International Entrepreneurship Network. So I'm happy to be here and looking forward to seeing how I can um, get my business to the next level. So thank you for having me. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, so Janine, you snuck in here too, so you can give a quick introduction if you'd like. Unmute yourself. Hey everyone, I'm Janine Olmos. I live in uh, Kansas, right outside of Kansas City, Missouri and Kansas. I am a resilience coach and I just recently launched my Facebook page back on uh, February 14th, Valentine's Day. Um, and um, I'm trying to get my coaching business started. I'm currently a mental health and addiction therapist for adolescents. Awesome. So right now you have a job and, and then you're starting a business? Right. Very good. Congrats. Yeah, I love new entrepreneurs. Yeah. It's so exciting. It's exciting and scary all at the same time, I know. Uh -huh. um, yeah. Oh, look at people keep sneaking in before we're done with introductions. Tanya, I see you. Can you talk? Tanya Rios? <laughs> Are you able to talk, Tanya? Uh, hold on. Ah. Let's see. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, <laughs> I just popped on. Am I, am I, 
you popped in at the very end of the introduction. So go ahead and give us your introduction. All right. I am Tanya Rios. I am a life coach and I work with emotionally eating and body confidence. Mm. And and you're never in a place where you show your video. Is there a reason like for that? Or are you? Um, actually, I'm still in my office at work. I thought it was sneaking on. <laughs> oh, there's no sneaking on Zoom. <laughs> I guess I see all. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll let you pass. I wish we could see you on video, though. Oh, I will. Let me. I'm just going to put myself on mute, clean up my room, and then I'll be able to. <laughs> all right. All right. Great. Okay, did I get everybody who can talk? I guess so. So Chuck and Whitney can't talk and Steve was not talking. All right, everybody's except for Angela. So um, uh, again, I just, I said a couple of announcements at the beginning of the call and a lot of you have come on since then. Just wanna mark your calendar for um, a, uh, the International Speaker Network Conference that we're gonna do in August. So August 21, 22, for sure, we might have a morning session on the 23rd or an optional kind of a, a networking outing or something or wine tasting. I don't know yet. And uh, so mark your calendars. I'm still looking for speakers for that. And I'm also looking for people who want to sponsor, be having a vendor table. And um, so just all of the people that apply to the speaker network are being considered for that. And it does need to be for that particular conference, more experienced speakers. Um, so, and they have something to teach uh, speakers. So it's a speaker oriented conference. So, um, but, it will, and, and it will be really, really good because there'll be training, there'll be resources um, from people all over the country. So I'm excited about that. Uh, and I told you a couple things that are going on. Heather mentioned my International Entrepreneur Network. If you like these kind of Zoom calls, uh, you will love the International Entrepreneur Network that I run too. It's only $7 a month, you guys. And I think half of you are already members. So, you know, if you're not a member, you might want to come. It's where we can really strategize on, like for Russ, we could teach you what you need to do for speaking. For Michelle, we could evaluate your brand and give you suggestions. For um, uh, Janine, if you're new in business, then we can show you how to start getting clients and maybe how to create your signature system that you're going to sell, right? So there's all kinds of things that are talked about on those calls, and it's iEntrepreneurNetwork.com, um, the letter I, EntrepreneurNetwork.com. So that's kind of, I have a lot going on always just because it's so much fun. It's so much fun to talk to entrepreneurs, speakers, and authors. Okay. I want to introduce Angela and then she's going to take it away with like a 15 minute presentation, maybe longer. I'm sure this is going to be the topic of the night and I'm sure we'll just roll into a lot of Q and A and other things about websites. And if we have time, we might even pick somebody on the call to do a hot seat about their website. So somebody who thinks they need improvement and somebody who has something to look at already. So be thinking about that. If um, you want to be that person, private message me in the chat room and I'll, and I'll look at your websites, put your website in there and I'll see who I might want to call. Okay. So Angela Hall is, is her company is your helpful chick uh, or that helpful chick. I'm sorry. She's my helpful chick because <laughs> she's one of my virtual assistants and one of my techie team people. And I rely on her immensely every single month to do all kinds of things. Anytime my website goes awry, Angela's the first person on the scene. Um, anytime I need something new or creative or something looked up techie wise, Angela's the first person I call. So she is, she knows everything about technology and different platforms. So if you have questions on, should I use this or that? She's really good to ask about that kind of stuff. Um, if you're looking for a specific resource, which I am, by the way, a text message marketing platform for a client, which one do we use, right? She'll at least narrow it down to two for you probably. Um, so she is just everything tech. She's amazing. She has a team of people. And she's gonna to talk to us today about um, making sure your website is speaker worthy and what things we need to know about in your website and some other things you may not even be thinking about. So take it away, Angela, tell them about yourself more if you need to or uh, launch in if you wanna share your screen. 
you can. And if you guys are in a noisy place, I think you're all muted already. But um, if you have questions, hold off till she's done presenting, put them in the chat room, and then we'll ask for questions at the end. Cool? Awesome. All right. Um, that's good. Thank you, Katrina. Uh, as she said, I am that helpful chick. And I do, I'm, I'm just a geek. That's, <laughs> I'm a tech geek. <laughs> So I love all things technology. Um, I'm a problem professional problem solver when it comes to websites. Um, so there's, when thinking about your website, um, I think the main thing that uh, you need to, to focus on is making it um, user friendly. So you want to make things as easy as possible uh, for the user on your website. They don't have to hunt for anything. And, and that's especially true for your speaker page. So you want to look at the, uh, all the things that uh, somebody looking for a speaker, you want to make sure you have all those components um, easily found on that page, that it's easy to find your speaking page, make sure it's in your menu in a prominent position. Um, and then um, when I'm, I'm not a speaker either, so, so I apologize if I stumble. <laughs> um, so what I'm gonna, I have a few examples um, of a few speaker pages that I think are good. Um, but at first I'm gonna run through a few of the, um, the major components, the things that you should have on your speaker sheet. <clears throat> so the first one is video. Video is very important. Um, if you don't have a recording of you speaking, um, I suggest you get one. Uh, you can do free speaking. Katrina can probably advise you a lot better than I as, as far as where to get these speaking engagements. But um, really it's a good idea to have at least a, a 10 minute clip um, on your speaker page that gives them a sample of your speaking style and one of your topics. Um, one thing you can do as well is um, go to colleges. Um, a, lot of, a lot of colleges have internship programs. So you could get an intern um, that doing, doing that's doing video or photography to take care of those things for you. Um, and then also upload it to YouTube. That's YouTube is a search engine. So take that video uh, clip of yours, put it on your YouTube channel. If you don't have a YouTube channel, you need to create one. <laughs> um, it's, a, it's an additional way for people to find you. Um, and that's a whole nother monster is the Google algorithm. But um, you definitely want to uh, have at least that 10 minute clip. And then over time, as you're speaking more, um, it's a good idea to accumulate um, enough video clips to have like a, maybe a speaking clips page that people can go to. Um, and these could be shorter snippets, you know, three to seven minutes. Um, just to give various styles uh, and topics of your speaking. Uh, the next item that you should have on your speaker page is a list of topics that you're able to speak on or the um, titles of the speeches that you might plan to give. Um, you wanna be thorough and, and really descriptive uh, about each topic so people really understand what it is that you speak about and um, it's a, it's a strong selling point uh, to get you booked for more gigs. Uh, another good item to have on your speaker page is testimonials. These can be from uh, any speaking that you've done. It could be, um, uh, at, I don't know, I'm trying to think of, of different things. It, it could be a platform like this. It doesn't have to be live. You could, it could be a Zoom um, presentation. It could be uh, at your local church or just wherever, just get um, a few testimonials to put on the page so people can see that you've really made an impact on other people through your speaking. That's all, also a, a strong selling strategy. Um, and then you also wanna get pictures of you on stage. And this is really important. And again, you can, um, if you don't wanna pay a, for a high dollar photographer, check with your college um, for interns, um, for photography students, things like that. And when you're getting pictures, you want to make sure that they're not getting pictures of only you on the stage. Um, Cause then it looks like you're speaking to nobody. <laughs> so when they get, um, take pictures of you speaking, you wanna make sure you get part of the audience 
and hopefully with some reactions <laughs> so that they're interacting with you as you speak. Um, so don't just get those individual shots up, up on the stage. Um, it's a good idea to also have some professional um, headshots. Photographs have at least one black and white photo would be good. Um, and then a short biography. You want, um, I don't know, I would say five to seven sentences maybe speaking about your purpose, what you love about speaking, what you love about speaking about the topic that you're, that list of topics that you had. Um, you really want your passion to show through. Um, like Russ was talking about, he's all about I don't know, investing. So that sounds like something he's really passionate about. So you really want that to come through when, when you're writing your biography on that page. Um, and then another thing you want is a downloadable uh, speaker. What we, I think people call them different things, speaker one sheet, speaker sheet, um, but you want a downloadable version. And it's basically the, the same information that you have on the page is just one that somebody who's looking for a speaker, they can download it and have it handy. So it'll have your um, it'll have your list of topics, um, your contact information. Very important. Don't leave your contact information off of there. Um, have it on your downloadable version, as well as having it on your speaker page. Um, so I guess uh, now I can I'll show you a. I pulled up three examples, and. There are three different styles and layouts. And so even if you don't like the, the design of the pages, that's okay. What you really want to focus, you can design pages any way you like. Um, the thing that you want is the information. Um, so let me just share my screen. All right. So this one has a nice um, eye-catching picture. Uh, I'm not a fan of the, the big, huge pictures, but this one's not quite so bad. Um, but it has a good headline, and it's eye-catching. She's got a short bio here. That one's OK. And then she's got a few videos, one of her speaking, one with uh, someone that attended her event. Um, interacting with somebody that she spoke, that listened to her event. And then here she's got her speaking topics where she, yep, she has the title and then a longer description. And then the testimonials, a video, a video testimonial is always nice if you can get somebody to do one for you, um, but written ones are okay. Um, and if you have some of these, this is good as well. Um, uh, what's the word is escaping me? Um, as seen on. Yeah, as, as seen on or a brag bar, um, different places that you maybe have spoken. And then, oh, of course, the link to Booker. And then here's another one, the really, really big image. But you see, this is the kind of picture I'm not talking, not necessarily. They took this one them, themselves, of course. So they got a picture of the whole audience. But if somebody's taking a picture of you on the stage, that's the kind of thing you want to keep in mind is getting that audience in the picture as well. And then they have a few videos here of their topics. And then the, the uh, headline of their, their talk, and then a short description of the talk. And then some more uh, clips. And then the link to, to hire them. And now we have Katrina's. Oh my God, you picked me. <laughs> <laughs> so she's got all the information, and this is what I was talking about, too. You want to make sure you have all the information so that somebody who is looking to book somebody to speak, um, it's not difficult for them to find what they want. So, um, and she gives instructions, like if you want to click on, if you want these headshots, you just have to click on them and save them. 
Um, downloading her speaker sheet is right here. You just click to download. And she even does an introduction video. And then we have clips down here of her actually speaking. And then of course the testimonials. Contact information, speaking topics, and another testimonial. Um, so that is about it. <laughs> uh, First question, what would make a website not speaker worthy? Give us some thoughts on what not to do if you really want to be taken seriously as a speaker. What have you seen that's like, oh, I wouldn't hire them or? <laughs> uh, I would avoid trying to keep it not so busy. Um, and that, to me, that goes along with making things easy for people to find. So if, if you have too much going on on your web page, then it's just too much. It's like information overload. Um, that would, I guess that would be my main thing. And um, I think it's a good idea to stick with about three colors on your website, have a, a primary, a primary and two secondary. So that way, because if you have all these, um, I've seen some ghastly websites that have like a thousand different colors on them. And it's like you're walking in a kaleidoscope and it's just not pretty. Um, and what about functionality wise, uh, some back end stuff that helps that it's helpful for to manage the stuff, the leads and the, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, one thing you do want to um, with images and video, um, if you're not aware, you can't upload video directly to a website. So you need to host it somewhere, somewhere like YouTube or Vimeo. Um, YouTube, you can make it unlisted if you don't want it on the you know there's three different ways you can put it on youtube it's public unlisted and private uh, so public anybody can view it unlisted um it's you can anybody with the link can view it and then private is just for your own personal so you can mark it as unlisted and then put it on your website um then images images are important to not put too large of a file onto your website. It can make your pages load really, really slow. Um, let's see, I use Photoshop, but that's um, an expensive tool. There's a free one called um, Pixlr, P-I-X-L-R dot com forward slash editor, E-D-I-T-O-R. Um, you can upload your images. It's an online tool and resize them so they're a smaller size. You really don't, like if, say for example, you take a picture with your phone, um, it's gonna have dimensions astronomical like 6,000 by 4,000. That's way too large to put on your website. Um, so you want to cut that down by, I would say a thousand or less uh, for those pictures. Um, and like I said, you can use that free tool um, there's sure there's probably some other ones, um, but that was the, the first one that came to mind. Um, on the back end, uh, do you mean for like, like uh, collecting emails, that kind of thing? Is that what you're well, talking about? As a speaker, we want to get booked. We want to make it easy for them to book us. So uh, right. I put my email address and my phone number twice on the page. Number one, a lot of people don't even have their phone number on your website. Don't do that. Right. That's making it hard for people to find you. The yeah. speaker bookers want to be able to call you right away, send you an email. They don't want to fill out some lengthy opt-in box or form necessarily, but the link to their contact page, make sure you have a form on your contact page, but make sure you have full contact information. Make sure it mm -hmm. says where you are in the world, okay, yeah. on your website. So if you're really wanting to be effective as a speaker and taken seriously as a speaker, especially a paid speaker, you better have your address on your website be professional have your address your phone number your website please on the footer as well as the contact page possibly even on the speaker page itself um, you might want to talk about how you get booked like if you look at my speaker sheet that's linked on that page i have a whole front page cover sheet that says 
these presentations are good for 90 minutes. Um, they can be cut down and customized depending on the time frame allowed and their um, and Katrina charges to uh, um, or uh, charges to speak. Uh, but sometimes she waives the fee depending on the organization. So I say things like that so they know they have all the information they ever need at their fingertips to know whether they want to contact me and learn and you know get to know me or not. So yeah. you can put that on the web page. You can put it on a separate document. Um, that's up to you. I really like the Susie Carter. I know both of those guys and the Susie Carter, how she um, had her topics listed and then you could click to read the whole description. So mm -hmm. it didn't clutter up the website. I really, really like that. I really like that and I should probably do that. So take it out. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, but that's a really great way to showcase because speaker bookers, I book speakers, right? So I book speakers. And what I need is like a, a full topic description. I need your title and I need a, a little marketing description of what you're going to speak about and who it's for and why they should care. So I can put that on the web page or a flyer and promote your talk, right? Um, maybe even three to five bullet points of what people are going to take away from your talk. So I ask for that when you apply to speak at this group, right? To get you in the habit of having that available because Every single speaker application that I fill out, I have to have that. And so you need to have it ready to go, written to copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste to apply for things. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of times um, for paid speaking gigs, it's a little different. <coughs> but if you're applying for conferences and things like that, you have to have that at your fingertips. So I just have it in a Word document on my computer and I'll just be ready to copy and paste depending on the topic that I want to submit to that particular online form or I'll send them the whole 14 page document if it's just someone that says, well, I want you to speak. I, and I'll say, great, why don't you read this, pick a topic and let me know which one you want. And then it has all my topics in there and descriptions. And they'll come back and say, great, I got everything I need. I want topic number three. I'm like, perfect. And that's a done deal. It's easy. Okay, so make it easy for the speaker booker. You always have to make it easy for the speaker booker. Um, if you make it hard for us to find your information or get stuff out of you, we're going on to the next person on the list, right? So that's the biggest thing I think about your speaker page is making it easy for us, um, first of all. And then we have to know what you speak on. So don't, don't, think, don't think it's obvious. Sometimes it's not obvious. Any other words you wanna say, Angela, or do you wanna open it for Q&A? Uh, I think those are the, the main things. Um, so I'm happy to, to answer some questions. I think Russ has already got one to hear. Okay, good. What did Russ say? Yeah, Russ, do you, so do you recommend speaking being one offering on your website with other products or do you have a separate website entirely dedicated to your speaking? I think it yeah, depends. It looked, like those, it looked like those examples were fully dedicated websites to their speaking, but maybe I'm wrong. Mm. No, actually they're, um, they were all, just pages on the, I'll show, I'll share my screen again. Yeah, Brian and his son, they, um, they try to get paid speaking gigs. So that one might be more speaker oriented for them. Oh, they have products yeah. too. They, well, they have a couple of books. They mostly, um, they're actually clients of mine as well. And um, that's what they do. They, they do paid speaking gigs. Uh -huh. So th their website is, um, mostly geared towards speaking but um yeah, like uh she does more than just the the speaking so this is just a page on her website um mm -hmm. she's got a whole so she has like coaching products and books and other things like i do or and speaking is just one of because. many yep okay yeah. cool thanks she has the different ways you can work with her live um, events yeah she's similar to what i do so yeah, and I have got a whole bunch of stuff on my website. I haven't developed a new, uh, just a speaker website, but I'm not looking for the paid. I can have a lot of products. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Now, if you're a paid speaker, like, you know, um, Chuck can't talk, but if you did, you might say that if you really, depending on the companies that you speak for, uh, you might need to differentiate yourself as the speaker over here and the entrepreneur over here. So I think it depends on the target audience. 
if it does, if the people you're going to speak for are also potential clients, I would mix it together because it's just a more cohesive thing. And yeah, that's what that's, that's my, I mean, it's not my main business speaking. It's more of a, you know, branding and credibility issue around my books, my podcast and my main business is managing money for clients, you know, so then I, but I get booked to speak based on like this one in March on my book and my podcast. Mm -hmm. So, right. And so you want to use it as a marketing tool, like a free, free speaking to market. That's what I do in hopes that they hire you for the other stuff. Exactly. Right. exactly. Now, right. if we can get a paid speaking gig in the process, yeah. okay. I'll take it, but yeah, right. we'll take it. Um, so that's why in my cover letter, I do talk about getting paid to speak, but I don't require it. I, I give the language that says I'm open to negotiation basically. Right. So because you want to make people, you don't want to just say, oh, I'm $10,000 a talk. Then if they have a $2,000 budget, they're going to just pass you by. They're not even going to be willing to see if you're willing to talk to them, you know, and see what you can do. So, um, but if you can get paid, why not at least, I'm always start high, go low. I'm $10,000 for a talk, but you know what? I'll do it for free. If you have 200 people in the audience that are my ideal target market. And I can make exactly. an offer. But yeah, that's like me. This stock and options right. trading group, 300 people, I'll speak for free. No problem. You know? <clears throat> right. Awesome. <laughs> what other, let's see. What other questions do we have for Angela or in general about your website, especially because that's really the topic of the night and you got to have a smooth running machine. Your website is the hub of your business. You guys You've got to pay attention to your website, even not just the speaker page, but the contact page, the opt-in forms, putting video on almost every page of your website these days. You've got to have videos. If you're not, I was on a gal's website earlier today and it was just a one page, well, no, she had multiple pages, um, but I didn't even, like, there's nothing. She's like, I don't know why I have such a bad bounce rate. A bounce rate is when people come to your site and then they just leave without doing anything. That's a bounce rate. And if there's a thousand people come to your website and two people contacting you on your contact page and maybe 10 people signing up in your opt-in box, there is something wrong with your website content. Okay. We need to fix it. We need to fix it and fast because you're losing business. What other questions? Feel free to unmute yourself and ask. Oh, hey Katrina, this is Chuck. Hey. I'm, I'm parked by an airport and I don't see any jets so I can talk for a minute. Uh, do you have any recommendations for the structure for a web page? Not what you've gone through, but WordPress sites? Any specific templates that someone can use to get up in a hurry? I have all kinds of opinions on that. <laughs> um, and now if it's if you're doing it yourself um, and you're not a, in a position to hire somebody to help you um, that is probably the only time that I maybe would recommend something like Wix or Weebly uh, and I cringe as I say it <laughs> I know me too I'm with you <laughs> yeah if you but you gotta put some money towards a website yeah so. um, but if you're if you're able to hire somebody to help you um, the first place to start is with your hosting platform. Please, 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 for the love of all God, do not host your website with GoDaddy. If you're there and you're locked into a contract, I'm sorry. <laughs> why, why not? I've been with GoDaddy for seven years and had not one issue. Oh, well, I, why, like, why would you say that? That, that scares me. Um, to, in my personal experience, they are not WordPress friendly and they try to charge you for every little thing such as SSL certificates, fixing any small issues on your website. These are things that other hosting companies include in your hosting package. You don't have to pay extra for it. Um, GoDaddy is so famous for uh, just, oh, you need this, oh, you need this, and you need this, and upon checkout, right? And you're like, and if you don't know what you don't know, then you're like, okay, add that, add that, I guess I need this, okay, and then you're walking out with 300 bucks, and you didn't need to do that. I hate yeah, that. Okay, I, I'm good with that, because I know what, what to say you yes to and what to say no to. That's fine. Yeah. But yeah. it's also, though, the SSL certificate. So talk about the SSL certificate for a sec. 
the the SSL certificate is what is on your website that gives that little padlock in the browser address bar. Um, you have to have that anymore. It used to be it was only if you um, took payments on your website. Now it's Google is um, I can't. It's been probably about a year now at least. Yeah. Uh, where they made a change where they you're going to get l a lesser they rank. Penalize you. They penalize mm -hmm. you if you don't have it. What it means is if you look at your website. Uh, in the browser and you have HTTP colon forward slash forward slash, you don't have an SSL certificate. If you have the S, HTTPS, then you have an SSL certificate. That's, the, that's how they can figure it out, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's the main thing. If you don't have it, you're not going to be able to add it. It's about 200 bucks to add it. Um, and, but Bluehost and some of these other hosting companies do it for free. GoDaddy charges you 200, but you don't want GoDaddy to do it. You want Angela to do it. And she'll do it for you. If you, and also there is a free way to do it. Um, you do have to renew it every three months, but it's free. Um, if you have access to a, what's called a C panel in your hosting, then I, I do know how to, to do that for you. So even if you are with GoDaddy and you don't have an SSL, as long as I can access your C panel, it depends on your hosting package, then I can do that for you. Um, and it, the cost of the SSL is free. I'm not free. The SSL is free. <laughs> uh, Angela, uh, um, do you have experience with moving people from GoDaddy to something else? Oh yeah. And okay. is it a major? Uh, it it the, usually no. Really, it's it's really just basically backing up a website and then installing it on the new platform. Is it's more to it than that. It's real technical, but no, for me, it's not difficult. And so who do you, who, whom do you like if you don't like GoDaddy? My first choice is Bluehost. Um, SiteGround is pretty good as well. Uh, those are my top two choices. Um, Green Geeks is, is okay. And then HostGator in a pinch if you're really um, strapped for cash. So there's some other questions. Uh, Russ says I'm hosted at HostGator, but my website is just using the free website hosting tools. Though I just need a brochure. No one has contacted me through this website. So I probably need Angela Cat to help you. <laughs> yeah, you don't want a brochure website. It's, it's no. the day and age of brochure websites are gone. You have to be interactive, playful out on your website. Get yeah, the challenge out. is the challenge is I'm an SEC registered investment advisor, and there's huge restrictions on what I'm allowed to say on websites, and so that's why everyone just has a brochure who's not Fidelity or Schwab. So anyway, well, um, you don't have to give advice on your website though. You still can't put a bio. You can't put yeah, your yeah, passion you it about this and that. Yeah, you yeah. Can, you can have video. There's no restrictions against video and introduction. You can talk like, I'm so passionate about helping people with their stocks. And when you work with me, then I teach you all that you need to know. I mean, there's yeah, you can do that. Right. As long as you don't say anything specific, you're right. You can say all Exactly. That. So yeah. just, this is what I can't stand about people. No offense. Like people that say, oh, compliance, compliance, compliance. No, no, no. There's ways around it. You just have to word it correctly. So you're not breaking the law right. and you can be more personal. So... Just you're right. You're think right. outside the box, right? And uh, and then Katrina. Yes. All one right. of the thing, a friend of mine, she's a media girl, mm -hmm. and one of the things that she says for people that are in that position is that you become the expert. So you only talk about what you're an expert on, and then people want to come to you because and you're not breaking any laws. You're not. You're not mentioning your company. You are an expert in a certain specific niche of you know whatever that is, and then there's not. And that's what she does all the time. She that's what she sets up for well, people that they become the expert. You can also talk about well, I have a podcast, and on my podcast this week we talked mm -hmm. about X Y Z, or I had so and so on, or in my book right. I talk about the concepts of blankety blank, and you know. That's, so that's that's the kind of ideas I need because I've just yeah. been so afraid of that you know you can't say anything that I haven't said anything basically. So. Well, and you can get your attorney or something to look at it before you launch it and stuff like that if you really need to. Um, C panel, did you have a question? Uh, look for 
So cPanel too, if anybody is, host, wherever you're hosting, make sure you know your cPanel login, please. Because if anything does go awry on your website or you get the blue screen of death and you're, or the, you know, oh, warning, warning, and you can't get into your website the regular login way, then yeah. you need the cPanel login to get into the back end of your website and a techie person needs to do that usually. But your hosting company knows the cPanel login. So just get that from them ahead of time. Keep it with all your logins and keep it handy. And then make sure you have a techie on hand that can, ah, you know, fix stuff in a pinch. Yeah. And, and please, please, please keep track of your logins. Have them all in one place. <laughs> That's, uh, and do backup of your websites. We could be here all night with reminders about your website. Do backups oh, yeah. on a regular <laughs> basis. Please have a plug in at least, a free one. Um, Barbara, you said um, you mentioned keeping your speaker page not cluttered. Does that apply to a regular website as well? I, I mean, I think, yeah, nobody wants to look at a website that goes, ah, you know, I have a lot of stuff on my website, but it's, it's about as uncluttered as I can get it, frankly. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> it also depends on your target audience. Who's actually coming to your website and what do they want to see? So it's not about what you want. It's about what they need to see on your website, in my opinion. And, and I guess we, we could talk about the homepage for a minute. So okay. I think your homepage is your welcome mat. Mm -hmm. So your homepage is in a, what we call above the fold. And that's what people can see without scrolling at all. So the first thing that you want them to see, you want them to be able to read what can you do for them. They don't want to know what you do and and all this other stuff they want to know what you can do for them so the first that's the first thing that they should read you know if, if i'm going to look come to your website how, what can you do to help me and that's what people want to know and that's what's going to keep them on your site and keep and get them to read more um <clears throat> and now we're talking about anybody in general not just the yeah. speaker bookers right yeah. speaker bookers if they're interested in you they'll go right to your speaker page so yeah. make sure it says speaker speaking or keynote speaker or book to speak as the navigation. Don't get cute and say, learn more about Katrina. Don't do that. Okay. Call it what it is on the page navigation, please. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Any other questions? I'm pulling up Mila, your website, you sent your website out. I'm like, we can look at it real quick. Do you want to be on the hot seat, Mila, for three minutes? Yeah? Okay, well, unmute yourself and let me share the screen. Oops, cancel, share. All right. Uh, book soon to be released from Cowgirl to Congress, Journey of a Suff. So this is just about your book? Because you're not selling anything else? Or are you? Where'd she go? Did she go away? Oh, you're still there. You're unmuted. You got to unmute. There, now you're unmuted. Oh, yeah, we're selling um, museum items of, from the archives, which are prolific. And we're... We're going to be selling the book as soon as it comes out, and um, and then I need to put a speaker page up. I can see that. <laughs> uh -huh. So you want to get people to your website to get um, museum items. Yeah, I'm working with museums, and I'm I'm doing spe a speaking tour and and putting up you know one woman's story as a suffragette. Okay, and about Jesse is the book character, right? Yes. Okay. Author bio about Mila and the book itself from Cowgirl to Congress. So that's not the cover. You don't have a cover yet. No, cover's coming this week. <laughs> that's fine. So you'll get the cover. And then, of course, um, you're going to tell us how to buy the book, right? Yes, we're going to have a button right on the top banner um, as soon as it's ready. Mm -hmm. So one thing I teach in my author training program uh, is to start a list, uh, a, a supporter list, or even start pre-selling it. So you can do two things. You can pre-sell the book now and just take payments on your credit card 
uh, I'm sorry, on your website. So you could say pre-selling the book, it'll be added in summer or in April, right? And they can click and pay for it now. And then you can house all these people in a database. And when it's done, you can ship all the books out, okay? Uh, so that's one thing you can do to get cash flow to help pay for some of the stuff and the books, okay? Then, but putting in a, um, a thing, like would you like to support the book launch? Uh, if you'd like to support our book launch and help us when we launch the book, if you're gonna have an Amazon book launch, for example, um, click and enter your name and email now and we'll send you information when it's ready to launch so you can help share it and buy the book on launch day. So that's- I do, have, I do have that at the bottom of the homepage. Okay, but that should be on the book page too. Yeah, you're a good point. And somewhere visible. This is not what I'm talking about. Okay. This is not, this is too passive. What I just said is not passive. It's, will you help us share the book on launch day? If you will, and you'll buy the book for nine cents, and you'll share it on social media and email. Please put your name and email in here and we'll send you information when the book's launched. This is a very passive, okay, I kind of want to know about the book. Thanks. Does that make sense? Yes. And should it be at the bottom or up at the top? No, it definitely, um, well, I would not only have an opt-in box for this thing. And this is all you have here. So... I would, opt-in boxes should always be on the top typically. So I would rather see it here, but I would probably design a different cover. I see this woman's photo all over your website over and over and over again. And it's just like too redundant for me. I think you need to design a different header up here with the cover, book cover, and explain a little bit why we're on this website because right now it just looks like a book website. It doesn't, I have to read more to understand there's more to the site. Does that make sense? And I don't have time to read. My header should explain it all. Okay. That's just a couple thoughts. Angela, what about you? Well, she's muted. But if you have any thoughts, Angela, on the, the layout, the design, anything like that. Yeah, I agree with what you said. There, there needs to be, um, the image is like you have the same image everywhere and then the you need an opt-in on the first page and you need to collect more than just the email would the opt-in in be at the top i wouldn't put it right at the top but maybe right after that like right in there mm -hmm. okay okay yeah and oh this is a video it's a digital storytelling about her life for five minutes. Okay. Oh. As I headed out the door with my ballot. Okay, that's good. May it doesn't have to be so big, by the way. It's taking a yeah, lot. Of it, it looks big. I, I was wondering about that. Um, and also, I didn't realize there was a video when I first saw it. Yeah. Because it just looked like one of these photos. So it took me a couple times to notice it was a video. So when you have words like this that say, watch this digital story about Jesse on YouTube, I would have put that in big bold letters in a different color font, okay. right? Yeah, good. So also be careful, this is another thing people do is they're too matchy matchy. So we've got this uh, teal color kind of thing. And then um, again, teal color, everything's matchy matchy, nothing stands out. Teal color, nothing stands out. Teal color, nothing stands out. Do you see what I'm saying? So yeah. when Angela was saying, don't have more than three colors on your website, you need at least two, okay? <laughs> so you need at least two colors, not just one and black or whatever, because you need to have a pop color for headlines and attention getting things um, and things like that. So like this might be in a second color. And if you're using these colors in the headline or in the book cover, you might want purple. Maybe, maybe it's purple and teal. So purple's your pop color right, for your headlines and, and such. Make sense? Yes, good. Pick at and least one other color. What, Angela? Like you can what? Also, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> if, you're, um, if your YouTube channel is verified, and it's real easy to do, you can just Google verify YouTube channel, and it's really simple instructions to verify your YouTube channel. 
But if you verify your channel, then you can um, do custom thumbnails for your videos. And that can be created really easy in Canva, uh, for example. So you could do an image that has a really big plate icon in the middle um, to make it really stand out as well to, for people to know it's a video. And the size you want is 1280 by 720 uh, for a video thumbnail. By 720, okay. Keep in mind too, and I know at the top of the hour, that your YouTube link down here at the bottom, it took me to that one specific video. That's not what you want to do. You want to take them to your actual YouTube page, okay? And so you can set up your YouTube page to have that be a highlighted video or area if you want to. Like if you go to my website, you're gonna have the one video or my YouTube, the one video that's highlighted here is a TV thing. But if you want that one video to be the book one, then you put that here and you keep it. So you can redesign the layout of your YouTube however you want with different playlists and videos and you can create cover designs like that but you can put a featured video, but don't just um, link over to that one video. So we came here and now we don't know, cause that look, that's supposed to be you. Like this is your, you are not her. So I would put your picture here. You need to brand yourself first and then share the, the video about your book, which isn't even on this homepage, see? So I had to click the video playlist in order to see all your videos. So just some thoughts and I'm going to stop sharing now because we got to wrap it up. Thank Hopefully you. That was helpful for everybody to get some ideas. You guys can all mute, unmute yourselves if you want to say anything or go around the room. Is anybody This was great. Yeah. Thank you. This was great. Thank you. Thank you so much for showing actual samples of both uh, uh, Mila's and the ones that Angela shared with us. Those are like really helpful. But I have a quick question about your multiple opt-ins. Because okay. I know you have opt-ins from everything. Yeah. Does your system, your system goes, knows when somebody's already in there and like doesn't add another duplicate record. Is that correct? Right. Unless they use a different email address. So sometimes people will opt in with different email addresses, then it will create two different people, two accounts. So then that person is getting two of my email newsletters. So you know if you have if you're in my system and you're getting two emails from me about the same thing, then you're in there with two different email addresses and you can unsubscribe from one. But the uh, but the emails track the autoresponders. So yeah, if you sign up for the spe free speaker training that I did, uh, free audio training, you'll get on the free speaker audio training list, right? And I might invite you to speaker stuff if you signed up to become a member of the ISN, this group, on my website, then you're on that list and you're getting announcements about that, but also everything that I do in my business too. Yeah. You gotta keep your list organized with different opt-ins, whether you're selling something or it's a free thing on your website. Everyone should, everything should be in its own list in the back end, for sure. Okay. Last minute question, you're good. Everybody get something out of it. Thank you, Angela, for being here and sharing your expertise. Um, I know it's late there. It is nine o'clock where she lives. She's in the East Coast. So give her a round of applause, you guys, for being here. And some of you are also on the East Coast. Barbara, Barbara, you're both on the East Coast. I get it. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but thank you. And uh, we'll see you next month for this call. Again, if you want any, any more calls, Thanks. there's so many groups that I'm a part of. I love Zoom networking these days. We can chat. We can take it to another follow-up call. So just message me, email me if you have questions, okay? All right. Thanks, you guys. Thank you. Thanks, Katrina. Angela, you got to put your website in the Yeah, chat I want your website, Angela. And it'll be in the <laughs> save chat documents, too, and then we'll... Highlight it in the I'll highlight it in the in the group too. Okay. I put my email up there too. Okay, great. 
Awesome. So which, one's your, which one's yours? Uh, that that helps check. check. Oh, at the bottom, probably. You can save the entire chat room if you go to the bottom. Oh, the helpful chick. Thanks. That, that, that helpful chick. That helpful chick. You can also just click on it. It opens up our website right now. You can contact her and then you're done. Okay, I'm signing off. All right. Okay. Bye. Okay. Thanks, you guys.